Hello, grade 12s. Welcome to today's lesson. It's economics with me, Spiwe. The focus for this lesson will be around environmental sustainability. Uh, we know that it is important that we look after our natural resources and that we do not exploit them so that the future generations could have access uh, to these resources. So let's get started. So we're looking at environmental sustainability. We know that this is quite an important topic because we've moved away from just focusing on making income or profit uh, but we are now also considering the planet and the people um, in our equation. So that comes from the triple bottom line report um, that uh, results from the King Code uh, report. Um, we know that King Code 4 has uh, been recently developed and we've had 1, 2 and 3 and there's actually a huge focus around environmental sustainability. So what is environmental sustainability? So it relates to the ability of the environment to survive um, its use for economic activity. So we know that we use the natural resources um, in most of our economic um, activities. So the ability for the environment to actually survive um, this process of it uh, being used uh, for economic activity is called um, environmental sustainability. So the environment is not an unlimited resource and it is important that we sustain the environment and so that it can be used by future generations, um, like I said earlier on. So it is not unlimited, so let's not get that um, um, confused. Um, it is limited, so we need to ensure that uh, we put measures in place in order to ensure um, that we can sustain it um, in order for our next generation or for our future generation uh, to have access uh, to the environment. Okay, so that's just an introduction to this. Obviously, there is some important terminology um, that we need to be familiar with. So I am going to spend a bit of time just going over some definitions um, that are key in this lesson. So if we have a good understanding of these definitions, then that would enhance our understanding of the uh, concepts that will be discussed in this lesson. So um, the definitions will help you um, understand the meaning of key economic concepts um, that are used in this particular lesson. So understand these concepts well and use your uh, mobile notes uh, to help you uh, with them as well. All right, so let's have a look at this. So starting off with our first um, concept, uh, which is the command and control, uh, known as the CAC as well. So this is the direct regulation of an industry or activity through laws of the state, um, and the state or through the laws that the state uh, will use uh, in terms of what is allowed and also what is um, illegal. Okay. So these are the regulations uh, or the laws that will be used um, to regulate a particular industry or an activity in terms of what the state considers uh, to be allowed and also what they consider uh, to be illegal as well. Then we've got the conservation. It seeks to create continuity um, of the environment while ensuring that the environmental change uh, considers the quality of life for both present and future generations. So it's, in, it's important that we acknowledge um, this transition that needs to happen uh, between the current generation and also the future generation, that we have to use our natural resources sparingly so that they are accessed uh, by future generations as well. Then we come to the concept of environmental sustainability. So this is the ability of the environment to survive its use of economic activity. It refers to meeting the needs um, of present generation without compromising uh, 
um, the needs of the future generation. Okay, so that's the ideal situation that we are able to ensure that the environment does survive um, its use for economic activity and also ensuring that we are meeting the needs of the present generation uh, without compromising um, the needs of the future generation. So I quite like um, how this is actually uh, put across because it gives us the clear picture of what environmental sustainability is all about. Then moving on to pollution, uh, we know it's a huge challenge uh, because of the nature of our industries and we know that government has put in some very strict uh, regulations in order to regulate or to manage this uh, pollution crisis um, that we are faced with. So emissions uh, which flow into the natural, natural environment from human activity and which are beyond the capacity of the environment to absorb. So they do, they do cause harm uh, to the environment as such. So it's important that we consider this, we manage this, and we put structures in place uh, to respond to this challenge uh, because it does cause harm to the environment. And then moving on to uh, preservation, uh, this is to keep resources uh, that are non-renewable intact. Uh, for example, the ecological systems and also the um, heritage sites. So remember, we can't renew these resources, so uh, preservation will ensure that we preserve them um, so that the future generation could have um, access to these resources. So it's important um, that we are also familiar with that particular concept. Then we've got the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development uh, because we know that it's important that different countries should come together, share their experiences in terms of how they, they've managed their en environments um, and discuss the importance of environmental sustainability and also ensuring that uh, we protect our natural resources. So um, there was a, a, a conference that was held. Uh, it was held in 1992 and it was known as the Earth Summit. So the goal of the UNCED was to create strategies to stop or to reverse the effects of environmental um, degradation or um, degradation, uh, which is damage and also to support the international efforts uh, to promote sustainable development as well in all countries. So it was a big conference, it was called the F um, Summit, and it discussed a number of issues around environmental sustainability, um, the importance of environmental sustainability, and what can be done in order to stop the damage or to reverse the damage um, that has been caused um, in um, in the environment and also how do we actually make sure that we promote sustainable development in all countries as well. So that's the interesting terminology that you need to know uh, before we actually get started uh, with the main um, topics in this um, topic or in this particular lesson. So the state of the environment. So the state of the environment is very important uh, for environmental sustainability. If the environment is damaged, it will become more difficult to sustain life on Earth. So it's important. So we need the environment in order to survive. So the environment can be damaged uh, by excessive uh, mining, by farming without allowing the soil to recover, by excess fishing without allowing the fishing um, stocks to build up again, and also by not controlling the release of pollution. So these are some of the items that could um, lead to an envir environment to be considered as damaged uh, because the following will not have been taken into consideration and therefore we are going to struggle uh, when we look at the concept of environmental sustainability. Let's go over those um, issues again. So when there is an excessive mining, so we know that my, um, we are a mining country, mining is a, quite an important activity in our economy, uh, but when it becomes too, um, too much or excessive, it does cause a, a lot of problems um, in our environment. The mine dumps that we end up with are a result of the excessive mining 
um, that um, has taken place. And then also farming without allowing the soil to recover um, can also cause harm to the environment. So it's important that uh, people follow the correct uh, procedures when it comes to farming and then also access fishing without allowing the fishing stocks uh, to build up again. Also very important, uh, we know that in the Cape and also in KwaZulu-Natal, um, there are organizations that actually focus in assisting this or managing this particular problem. So it's important that we take that into consideration as well. And also we need to control the release of pollu uh, pollution into our environment as well. Now to continue, let's look at pollution because we know that pollution relates to the introduction of uh, uh, contaminants uh, or poisons that damage the natural environment. So we know that pollution does cause harm uh, to the environment. So pollution can come from chemical substances um, that are released by factories because we said earlier on there are um, certain industries that actually uh, contribute to um, the pollution crisis that we are facing as well as from the households. So we as individuals are also responsible uh, because we litter in our rivers. Um, and you see the amount of litter that uh, is, is, is actually thrown or dumped in the rivers is quite scary. If you go um, to, to the ocean as well, when we go out for a picnic um, and we go to the beach and so on, we don't clean up. We leave our plastic stuff there. It goes into our ocean. Uh, it harms the, the species that lives in the water. Um, so there are all sorts of problems uh, that uh, are brought about by us and uh, not being able to follow the correct um, procedures when it comes to protecting the environment. Uh, business waste is also another issue. So the waste and rubbish and the waste from um, the business factories and from hospitals and, and so on. So that does contribute uh, to uh, pollution. So a pollution policy is difficult to apply in practice, so you can have it all in writing, but when it comes to applying it, it becomes a bit difficult uh, because you know how do you actually prove um, that they have um, contributed so much uh, towards uh, polluting the environment. So there are difficulties and challenges that are encountered uh, when it comes to actually proving uh, the pollution uh, policy. So the following are the three ways of dealing with pollution, okay? So we've identified the fact that pollution is a big problem in our country. So, but what can we do in order to assist uh, with managing the issue of uh, pollution? So these are some of the things that we can do. Uh, so we can use technology and control. So new technology is cleaner and has less impact on the environment. So the government controls pollution by limiting um, the use of older technologies that pollute the environment. So we should go for the new technology that is introduced in the market because we know that new technology is much cleaner than um, the older technologies that were used previously. And also um, government limits this uh, by making sure that they put control measures over the use of older technologies because they are the ones that significantly uh, pollute the environment. So government can use technology and they can also use control in order to ensure that they deal with the issue um, of pollution. So that is the first thing that they can do. The second thing that they can do is to look at the marginal decisions. So these are decisions made by government on what acceptable levels of pollutions are. Okay, so pollution will happen if you manufacture, in, if you run a factory, um, you are going to experience some pollution. But the levels, what would be considered as an acceptable level needs to be decided upon by the government. So government needs to make um, those policies around what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So please just take note of that. So if the government is too tolerant, because government can be at times uh, because they're quite excited about the economic growth um, that is happening by 
um, the increased productivity in those particular sectors or industries, so that could make them sometimes to be too tolerant um, or makes its decisions in the interest of expanding business rather than sustaining the environment. Um, so then pollution levels can rise um, at or to the point where the damage uh, of the environment is too bad. Okay, so government can, you know, be, can, they can be a bit relaxed um, at times with decisions around pollution and also enforcing uh, the regulations and the policy that are set in its policy documents. So if they continue doing that, and like I said earlier on, it could be because they see that the particular industry is contributing towards economic growth. So then they will relax and say, you know what, um, if we stop these people or if we uh, impose um, certain laws on what they do, then they might retrench people and then we're going to have high levels of unemployment again. So, and, and also it could impact on the productivity of certain items. So based on business decisions or the idea of expanding business, um, they could find themselves uh, compromising the sustainability of the environment. Okay, so moving on to our last point. So we deal with the issue of self-interest. For example, keeping a beach litter-free, uh, people use um, dustbins on the beach uh, because they want to use the beach that is clean. So this is building a culture that do not throw away uh, or throw a piece of paper on the floor, do not litter in your classroom, in your school, uh, because if you take ownership um, of these facilities because you use them. Who wants to be taught in a, in a filthy um, classroom? No one. We all want a, a classroom that is, is, is clean and it's neat and it's a pleasant um, learning environment. So I know I'm, I'm, I'm very particular when it comes to this. Uh, my students know that you know there's no littering and, and we respect um, our environment. So it's important to build um, that culture and, and allow people to take ownership um, of their uh, facilities so that when they take ownership um, they are in a position where they can look after them. So these are some of the things that government can do in order to ensure that they deal with the issue of pollution, use technology and control, um, use new technology because it's much cleaner, marginal decisions, decisions that are made by government in terms of what is acceptable in the levels of pollution and then also just taking self-interest, uh, looking after your facilities and your resources and um, so that when you use items, you know that they are clean uh, because you as a community have been taking good care of them. Before we continue, let's take a short break and I will see you right after this. Hello Grade Twelves, welcome back. It's Economics with Ms. Piwe and today we are focusing on environmental sustainability. Right, we're going to move on to our next um, discussion which is around uh, the issue of conservation. So we know that conservation relates to the preservation or the looking after of natural resources to ensure that they are completely used up, uh, that they are not completely used up and disappear from the environment. So we want to look after the natural resources, although we do need the natural, natural resources in the production uh, process, but we need to ensure that the future generations also have access uh, to these natural um, resources. So we need to prolong them um, in our usage um, so that they do not die out or disappear uh, from the environment. So con conservation is very important. Uh, you do have um, structures or organizations that uh, focus on this to ensure that uh, we protect our natural uh, resources. Um, and I know that the South African, um, I think it's called the South African Parks uh, Board, um, actually ensures um, that uh, our natural resources are looked after and that, that the future generations could have access to them. So conservation is necessary due to the pollution 
um, and also to the um, over-utilization um, or using too much of resources. So because we, when we pollute, we actually are compromising our natural resources, but also when we over-utilize um, our natural resources, we also compromise um, their sustainability as well. So the conservation of stocks or resources. So conservation is needed um, when stocks are utilized or used uh, more than they can uh, be reproduced uh, to replace what has been used. Um, so for example, um, that's when, when we look at the fishing industry. Um, so the fishing needs to be regulated in a way um, that it's okay to fish uh, for certain um, species, but you also have to give it time for the reproduction to actually happen. So the stock must actually pick up before you go back and utilize um, those stocks. So almost like in a supermarket, um, you, you use up and then there's an opportunity to actually put stuff back um, into the shelves um, so that you'll be able to access um, the goods and services uh, that you require. So same with the conservation of stock. Uh, we need to ensure that the utilization uh, is not more than what uh, can be reproduced or can be replaced um, in terms of what has been used. So th this leads, okay, so let me pull my screen, down. there we are. So this leads to a search for substitutes because uh, what was initially used uh, or used in the process has been used up and we can't actually access um, those um, raw materials or uh, those goods and services. So we'll have to look for substitute products in order to replace the stock um, that can no longer be reproduced. So conservation policies um, help to conserve the renewable stocks, for example, trees, and the non-renewable stocks, for example, the fossil fuels. Okay, so it's important to know that there are policies in place um, that can be used uh, in order to ensure that there is a protection of the uh, renewable and non-renewable um, stocks. The renewable ones, they can be reproduced, and um, hence we call them the renewable um, items. And the non-renewable, once they have been consumed, um, they can't be reproduced. So know the difference between renewable and non-renewable stocks as well. So what can be done to maintain the renewable stocks? So a market economy has an interest in the conservation as it helps to maintain the renewable stocks. For example, the timber and fishing, uh, that's trees and if we are fishing for um, species in our oceans. So conservation is achieved through the force of demand and supply, which helps to sustain these kinds of industries. So um, they will be sourced based on the demand. So the market forces of supply and demand actually help in the process of sustaining um, these kinds of industries. So it's not just because um, we feel like going and getting more fish. Uh, so they will, they, will, they will fish more when they know that there's a high demand at that particular time in the industry. And when there isn't demand, then there's not gonna be any fishing um, taking place because it, it's driven by the forces of supply and demand. So market forces play an important role in order uh, to regulate those industries. We also have what we call the direct controls um, that can be used in order to ensure um, that we do conserve um, these natural resources. So government maintains the stock levels of environmental resources through the issuing of permits and also the quotas uh, to the different suppliers. So if we are dealing with limited resources, so government has to issue out permits uh, to uh, particular suppliers who will have access uh, to the sourcing and using of those resources. And a quota system will have to be uh, developed on the quantity that can actually be consumed or sourced uh, in order to, to maintain their environmental sustainability. For example, government sets quotas uh, for fishing uh, to, uh, to stop catches being so large 
that they exceed um, a, a, a bigger number uh, or the growth of the fish um, population. So here there will be a, a, like a, a ceiling that would be imposed in terms of how much fish can be uh, fished uh, or catched uh, by the fishermen and it mustn't be bigger than the growth of the fish uh, uh, population as well. So we call that a quota system. It's put in place um, in order to regulate the quantity um, in that market as well. So it also sets quotas for cutting down um, trees to ensure that we don't deal or deforestation does not exceed uh, the rate of renewal as well. So it's important because here we are dealing with scarce resources if we don't uh, protect them, then the future generations will not have access to them. So it's important to consider those two things. Remember, with these sort of questions, you have to give examples. Um, hence, I've included the examples here um, so that you're in a position uh, to give an example of what a quotas uh, will be um, on the fishing industry and also on the timber um, industry and why government actually puts those direct controls um, in these particular industries. Then we move on to our next point, which is uh, preservation. Uh, so we've looked at conservation and now we are looking at uh, uh, preservation. So preservation is linked to conservation and um, it's about preserving existing assets to ensure they do not get used in a way that it is destructive uh, to the environment. So for this to actually happen, this process must take place. We must preserve um, our natural resources in order to ensure that they are not used in a destructive uh, manner. For example, starting off with private property, so we're going to look, that, look at that as our first example. So a game reserve okay, may be sold to a businessman to be used for farming, but the government can intervene and stop the sale because they recognize the importance uh, to the environment of preserving the game farm. Okay, so government may step in in a situation where they see that we need to preserve uh, the natural resource. In this particular instance, that's the game farm uh, because a businessman wants to use the piece of land for farming. So the government could step in and intervene in that process because when with a game farm, we are dealing with wildlife and we need that. We need a safe environment uh, for wildlife because of all the poaching that's currently happening um, in our country. Also still looking at uh, preservation. So preservation requires compromise. Okay, so I kind of like that opening sentence, a give and take. So farmers may develop um, their river mouth as a holiday resort. If this is not controlled and too many other farmers do the same, the entire ecosystem will be damaged and animal and plant life will be negatively affected. So it's okay uh, for a small group of farmers to actually do this and, 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 and develop their river mouth and make it a holiday re uh, resort. Uh, but if all the farmers do this, this is going to have a negative impact on our ecosystems. Our ecosystem will be damaged and the well-being of the animal and plant life will be negatively affected by this decision. So it's important to have some regulation of some sort in these different um, structures or developments. So how do we ensure that we have sustainability in, in, our, in our environment? Um, so the market is, a, is driven by self-interest. So the market considers um, um, the environment as an asset to be used for its own benefit. So sustainability is achieved um, in the free market only to the extent that resource prices rise as they become scarce or so less available. So you're dealing with the problem of scarcity and then you have uh, too many people chasing after a few products, then that also leads to inflation. And then also through the development of an environmental or an environment friendly technology. So technology also plays an important role when it comes to um, sustaining 
the environment. Uh, but markets do see uh, the environment as an asset that can be used um, in order to generate income. So interventions need to come from government in order to ensure um, that that is regulated and the resource prices are regulated in a way. So when the resource prices go up, then the, they become scarce, uh, less available, and then we have to rely on technology um, that is environmentally friendly. So moving right along, so there is a social interest in using um, the environment, not only uh, to the direct producer or consumer, but also to people in general, now, in the, uh, now and in the future. So this means we all have an interest in preserving the environment because we like to go on holiday, you like to go on a game um, a park or in, on a game reserve and go for a drive and see um, the, the, the big five and so on. Uh, but if you don't uh, take a stand in order to preserve the environment, then you are not going to enjoy those benefits that the environment brings uh, to our lives. Because like we said, when we looked at tourism in our previous lesson, uh, we, we spoke about leisure and just going away into a quiet place and being in touch with mother nature. So if we don't have mother nature, that is the environment, so who are we going to be in touch with when we are wanting to relax and so on? So it's important that we all uh, play an important role and hence in other schools uh, they've got the Enviro Club um, and you can sign up to be part of the Enviro Club and then you start within your school premises controlling the litter situation, the usage of water because water is another scarce resource so you, you can't re leave a tap running the whole day. Uh, and, and if you see that there's a, a pipe burst or something, you report that immediately. So some of the reasons why the market fails to ensure sustainability, because we know that the market plays an important role in this whole process, but sometimes they do fail uh, to ensure sustainability. So we said that the market sees the environment as a common resource, something that they need to use in order to generate an income. So they want to um, sell um, the fish onto um, the, the, the supermarkets or, onto, or, or to the people. So when they, they see the ocean, they see a common resource where they can go and, and catch fish and then sell them um, in the fish market. Uh, but also there are external externalities that they need to consider, um, such as air pollution, which is caused by factories, uh, it cannot uh, be stopped without restrictive policies. So government has an important role in terms of ensuring that they've got policies that they can impose in order to stop this. So the factories are not going to stop uh, polluting because they aren't um, specific and enforceable uh, restrictive policies um, that can be used to stop them. So they take full advantage of those situations and they continue to pollute the, um, the environment. So these are some of the challenges. Also the lack of knowledge um, in terms of what can be done in order to conserve or to preserve um, the environment and also um, issues like what really causes um, damages uh, to the environment. Sometimes companies are, are, are not well informed as to what really harms the um, environment. So businesses um, cause um, damage without realizing for example, companies uh, making the aerosol cans, um, such as the spray on deodorants, and, and did not know that the damaging, uh, damaging effect um, they had on the ozone layer. So they were just making their product, um, the cans, and, but they didn't know that they were actually contributing to the ozone or to the damage that gets done to the ozone um, layer. So without you know, having the, the, the knowledge or the information, then you can't know if you are really causing harm uh, to the environment. So more education needs to be done uh, in terms of what are the causes or what are some of the actions that are considered to be dangerous uh, when it comes to the environment. So other companies say, you know what, we didn't know. We were just producing an item, but we didn't know that it had a negative impact on the planet or on the environment. Um, so it's important to educate um, uh, people and businesses as well. 
and the nature that people are so careless, uh, people continue uh, with harmful practices and leave future generations to worry about the consequences. Okay, so people, you can see a bin that there's a bin over there, uh, but then you will just decide to throw that piece of paper on the floor when you can actually walk to the bin and put the, um, the paper there. Actually, I, I love when people do the recycling uh, programs because the bins will be labeled uh, that here you put paper, there you put um, cans, and in here you put plastic. And people will actually put litter in these bins. So that's just absolutely appalling. So it's important that we as citizens are accountable and we take responsibility in terms of preserving the environment because if we don't do that um, then we are compromising uh, the future of the next generation in terms of the resources. All right, so let's take a quick break. I will see you right after this. Hello Grade 12s, welcome to today's lesson, it's Economics with Ms. Piwe and before the ad break we were looking at um, some of the reasons why markets actually fail uh, when it comes to environmental sustainability. And then for this bit we are going to focus on the major international agreements uh, regarding environmental sustainability. So since the 1990s, the United Nations has convened uh, various meetings with all countries worldwide on issues affecting them. They should take responsibility uh, for the management of these issues. So it's important to know that um, there have been big meetings uh, between different countries in order to deal with issues um, that actually affect them. And environmental sustainability is one issue that affects a lot of countries. So let's have a look at some of the agreements that have actually taken place uh, during these big meetings. So we had a, a, a meeting that was held at the Rio de Janeiro um, summit, uh, where the summit took place in 1990 uh, with the objective of sustainable development. Um, it envisioned the uh, outcomes or the outcomes included um, the environmental protection as an integral part of development. So development is encouraged, but uh, it shouldn't come at a price of destroying our environment. Also, the cooperation to conserve, protect and restore the health of the ecosystem was discussed at this particular summit. Um, also, we wanted to prevent um, the degradation or degradation of uh, the systems that were polluted and also to look at um, the cost of pollution uh, in terms of the environment and also assess its um, impact as well. Um, so that was the summit um, that was held and those were some of the outcomes or, or decisions that were taken at um, that particular summit. Uh, but what I liked was that there was an inter that uh, the environmental protection was considered as the integral part of development because the developing countries want to grow their economy, but they are doing it at the cost of the natural resources. So from the conference, it was discussed that we need to ensure that the environmental protection takes place and that we shouldn't um, emphasize on expanding business at the cost of the environment, uh, but we should find sustainable ways uh, when we are sourcing the natural uh, resources. And also here in our country, in Johannesburg, uh, we also hosted a summit um, in 2002, um, which was on sustainable development. Okay, I still remember when um, this, um, when the day that the summit was actually um, taking place. And some of the outcomes were the issues around getting rid of poverty and also changing the unsustainable patterns of consumption, um, globalization, health and also the environment, okay? So it was a very big conference and there were a lot of um, issues that were dealt with 
in that conference because uh, poverty was also one of the big issues um, because uh, they were in a country that has um, high levels of poverty, uh, particularly in the rural communities. So the, the whole point of the summit was to look at ways to ease poverty in our society, but also to change these unsustainable patterns that we have as consumers, as businesses, and also as um, uh, individual firms, and to say what can we do differently in order to protect our environment. And also uh, we looked at globalization um, and the impact that it plays uh, when it comes to the sustainable environment. Remember there were issues that the developing um, countries were dumping their waste onto our oceans and then we were the ones who were paying the price for that. Um, and there were certain agreements um, that were made with certain developing countries uh, that the government actually allowed um, those countries to dump um, the, 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 their waste on um, their oceans as well. So all of these were discussed at the Johannesburg summit that was held in 2002. Then we had another big um, summit around um, sustainable growth and development, uh, the Rio Plus 20 summit, um, also known as the um, United Nations Conference on Sustainable um, Development. It took place in Brazil and the main issue was sustainable growth and also getting rid of poverty without damaging um, the environment. So you see that uh, poverty and the environment seem to go hand in hand uh, because you know we want to reduce um, the poverty rate but we don't want to do it at the expense of the environment so it's it's important that we find ways of growing our economy but those ways need to be sustainable uh, because we don't want to harm our economy uh, by saying that but we are expanding business and therefore we need to exploit natural resources it shouldn't work like that so these uh, summits actually help and there are countries that have been very successful uh, when it comes to sustainable development. So they get a platform where they can share um, the, the, I, what, or share the ideas and also what they have done right as a country in order to deal with um, uh, issues of sustainable environment because we can learn uh, from other countries as well. So in this particular summit, it was agreed that a green economy uh, would be the one um, of the tools that can be used for um, sustainable development. That sustainable development uh, goals covering economic, social and environmental aspects will replace um, the MDG from 2013. Okay, So there were some agreements that were made uh, and one of them was all about having the green economy. Uh, uh, preserving and also uh, making sure that we protect our environment and that there will be emphasis on issues of economic um, development uh, when it comes to environmental sustainability but also the social aspect for example poverty would be considered um, in the process um, of environmental sustainability but also the environmental aspects and um, that will be to uh, uh, protect the environment and also to preserve the environment uh, will replace uh, the MDGs, the goals that were discussed uh, from the 2013 um, conference. So these are some of the big summits that we've had um, uh, in, 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 in the world regarding sustainable development. Uh, you can see that it's become a very important issue because now you have countries coming together to discuss this issue. So it's not just an African problem or it, it only uh, affects the East or the West and so on, uh, but it is a global issue. And some countries, you know, when you look at um, countries like China uh, and the, the factories that actually are in that country and also the pollution levels that were taking place that actually policies had to be put in place uh, because the environment was becoming so unhealthy and um, that the citizens or the residents of the country were struggling to breathe clean uh, fresh air because of all the pollution um, that was coming from the factories. I remember many years ago, I, I, I worked on a case study and that was looking at the pollution uh, that was taking place in China uh, because of the rapid uh, production that was happening in their factories and the negative impact that had 
had on the environment. So all those issues need to be considered um, and it's important that we discuss them when we are looking at the concept of environmental sustainability. So it's important to take note of that. Um, you could be asked uh, to discuss um, some of the summits that have actually taken place around sustainable development. So you are expected uh, to know quite a few of these. There's quite a lot of them. Um, but I think if you know about three of them, then you are covered and you are good uh, to give a much more detailed answer in your exam. Um, so these are the ones that I think were uh, important and popular and had a lot of support, uh, but also made some sound um, informed economic decisions around the issue of environmental sustainability. So it's important that uh, we know them. Um, and also that they looked at different aspects. It wasn't just focusing on the environment itself, but also the economic challenges that um, the world of business faces and also uh, the economic uh, social issues that we as a country um, have to deal with. So those were also discussed uh, in the summit. So let's just recap them quickly. So we had the one that took place in Rio in 1992 and uh, some of the outcomes included uh, environmental protection as an integral part of development because when development happens then we know that the, the, the environment pays the price for that. I mean, you can see we, we, we are making some good progress in our country. So you look at the new residential estates um, that are developed, that there are eco uh, rules and regulations when it comes to building. So you can buy a piece of land, but how you build has to ensure that it goes with the policy of environmental sustainability. So that's important. It shows that we are making the necessary steps in order to ensure um, that we continue to preserve our environment. Then we were also very fortunate to, uh, to host a summit in Johannesburg, um, the Johannesburg Summit, and um, the focus was around getting rid of poverty and also changing these unsustainable patterns um, that we have when it comes to consumption, globalization, health, and also other um, environmental issues. Um, so it was a good platform to have these discussions, and but also to exchange um, information as countries uh, to see what other people are doing right and what can we learn from them. And then the Rio Plus 20 Summit, um, also known as the United Nations um, Conference on Sustainable Development, uh, which was held in Brazil, um, also focused on issues of um, um, going green, having a green economy, uh, but also looking at the economic, um, social, and also environmental aspects as well, because these are interrelated and they are very important. All right, so time to sum up our lesson. So in this lesson, we have covered some uh, interesting concepts uh, with regards to environmental sustainability because it is a very important topic because we've moved away uh, from just making profits because we want to be sustainable um, in the way that we conduct business. And hence, it is important for us uh, to study the environmental sustainability. So let's just go over the definition once more. So we said that environmental sustainability relates to the ability of the environment to survive its use for economic activity. So we know that for economic activity, we use the natural resources in the production process. So, but how do we ensure survival of the natural resources? And hence that will bring us to the concept of environmental sustainability. So the environment um, is not an unlimited resource. So another important point that we need to note, uh, it is limited, so it has to be used sparingly um, so that the future generations could have access to it. And it, it is important um, that we sustain the environment um, so that it can be used for future generations because if we do not sustain the environment, then the future generations will not have access uh, to the natural resources that we as the present generation have access to. We also looked at the point or the concept of conservation. Uh, we know that it's important and our country is doing a lot of work around this uh, because we are a, a, a popular um, tourist um, destination and therefore uh, we need to ensure that we, we protect our natural resources and, and our natural species 
um, so that people will continue to come to South Africa uh, to enjoy um, um, these um, 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 environments that we have to offer as a country. So conservation relates to the preservation, which is the looking after of natural resources to ensure that they are not completely used up and disappear from the environment. So conservation is necessary due uh, to the pollution and the overutilization of resources um, that is currently taking place. So we know that if we want to ensure um, that the future generations have access uh, to these resources, we need to have strict uh, restrictive policies that will protect the environment and that will ensure that we as, as individuals or households and businesses, when we use these um, natural resources, we use them sparingly and also looking after our renewable and non-renewable um, resources uh, because with the non-renewables, once they've been consumed and they can't be reproduced again, but even those, uh, the ones that we can reproduce, um, the timing and the, the pacing of using those natural resources is important because if we over or we exploit them, if we overutilize them or we exploit them, we might find ourselves uh, with a crisis. So it's important that we all work together um, in order to make sure that we protect our environment. Well, that has been a very interesting lesson in terms of environmental sustainability. I trust that you've enjoyed the lesson and you've learned so much uh, from this lesson. From me, Ospiwe Ngeting in Tanda Nongke Makai. Walls of Metrics 2021 Catch-Up is brought to you by the Department of Basic Education, NECT, ETDP CETA, SABC, Multi-Choice, and DBE-TV on OpenView Channel 122, in partnership with...